there. If not, we'll, we'll move on down to. Oh, they'll they'll catch up with me. I didn't. I meant to give them 15 seconds, but I didn't. But they'll catch up to me. Uh, go down, I guess, to eight. Yeah. First of all, seven. We have a spotlight Thursday night on service learning at Smyrna West. Uh, also Thursday night, Mr. Odom's going going to update the board and also the public on how our schools performed on the 2009 state report card. Nine old business. I know uh, the last board meeting we decided we want to talk a little about McFadden School of Excellence, the admission policy. Ms. Barnes, you want to kind of give a quick summary of, of the current admission policy? <clears throat> Just a recap on what McFadden does at this time. They assess the number of available slots at each grade level. They accept applications as they come in for all of those available slots. They screen all the students in kindergarten through grades two, and they use Terra Nova scores for those entering three through five, since we'll stop at that point now. And then based on the number of available openings and the eligible students based on the screenings and information, they place siblings first, then they place students that reside in the county and then if available slots are still there, they fill with students who reside in the city limits. So if the sibling is, is a city resident, they get the slot. They have, they have priority over the, Correct. the county resident. And then they maintain a waiting list at each grade level in that order, siblings, county, city, uh, as slots become available. Wayne. Do we have a track record over the last three or four years? Right now, we're, we're almost 50-50. Uh, has it been consistent like that over the years? To the best of my recollection, yes, sir. The years that I was there, we started out primarily county, but then those city numbers grew, and it's, it's always been a heavy number of city in, in the program. I'd say the sibling rule. Sibling made a big difference in that, correct? What, what kind of, Ms. Barnes, just out of curiosity, how many people were typically on the waiting list? It depended grade. on the grade level, Mr. Gill. Kindergarten, you usually had about 20 or 25 on the waiting list. First and second, you always had a, a pretty large waiting list. Um, bigger than 25? 20, 25 most was about the highest we had. Um, fourth grade, because you were able to take 10 new students, because you, the number j jumped from 20 to 25, yeah. you were able to fill a lot of slots, so the waiting <clears throat> list was a little bit smaller at that grade. Uh, seventh grade, it picked up again. Of course, that's not going to be... An issue now so and we are going to be expanded by one grade all k-5 spots so you're it, you're instantly increasing 20 k through three spots and also 25 fours and fifths correct here i'm gonna <clears throat> and i guess we'll vote on it third night but i'm gonna still go back to what i said before uh having that stipulation in there shouldn't have been in there in the first place like I said, city residents, the Mercer, they're all county residents. So I don't know how you can sit there and pick that one group out. I don't know how you ever got by with it. I kind of thought the difference was that if if a child went, you know, K-5 or K-6 through the city system, uh, Jeff, correct me if I'm wrong, but the taxes paid, uh, always went to the uh, to the to the city system for that child. If they went, am, am I correct with that? I mean, taxes, state money follows them. The taxes with, with possibly years lag because of growth tend to follow the child. So, in retrospect, if 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 a city kid went to McFadden, we'd get the dollars. Well, right, but it'd be a but year's if you went lag there, we'd on share it. Share one more student worth of taxation with the city. But I mean, the the point is that that the taxes, the county taxes they have paid, have not have not gone to the to the county. They've got, they followed the child to the city. Is that not correct? Because the county's taxes are shared, depending on the weighted average. 
membership. The, the ADM is used for one thing still in the state, so I, but I think we're saying, this, I think the three of us are saying the same thing, just in different ways. But the taxes, other than it, 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 when the year we open a school or the year that the city opens a school, you'll see some variation because it'll throw skew the growth off of it. But generally, the county taxes, the overall taxes that all Rutherford County residents pay will follow the child in whichever system he or she is in. But the statement that you say, uh, well, I pay city and county taxes both, it's not exactly true because county people pay some city taxes too because they pay that back. So, I mean, that's not said in that manner, but it's it's true. We do pay for those students too, so it's a balance there. The tax argument is complicated, but you're not paying two sets of property taxes like city workers. I mean, you might be paying just Smyrna, but, I'm, but not in the sense of supporting the correct system. Correct. Yeah, you know, I think just leave the tax out of it. I mean, although. Does pro property tax is not necessarily shared, I don't think, is it? And that's it. And the sharing is on sales taxes, right? The sharing is also on the county property tax. Even that paid by city residents? Yes. Okay. The city property tax, that is entirely to the city. Yeah. I, I just think we're sort of straying from the main point, which is a point of, of equity. Uh, <coughs> I think we're probably all sick of this argument. I don't know. Oh, it's, not. It, it's not a new argument. It's an age-old argument. <clears throat> Two systems, both systems trying to provide an accelerated program for their students. We did this. The city, I guess they're, I'm not sure which came first, the city magnet program or the county magnet program, but here the county is trying to establish for its system a magnet program. Use McFadden and use Thurman Francis. The only, t only time we've made seats available to someone outside of our system is outside the county system is when we didn't fill all of the seats. We didn't fill the seats. There weren't enough children from the county program that wanted to go here, so we opened up those seats to others that live within the county, which then becomes the city resident. The city has done the same thing in a, in a reverse manner. When they opened scale school, they had some few empty chairs, so they welcomed some children outside the corporate limits into the scale scope. I don't know if they still do that, but uh, this is not an unprecedented thing that we're doing in the, within the county with, or our area. What they do is if you want to go to a city school and you're a county resident, you put your name on a waiting list, and if they don't fill those with city residents, then they will give you they will allow you into the school. They at one time charged two or three hundred dollars, five hundred dollars. Jeff says they no longer charge that, but the city kids do get priority. But isn't that exactly what we're doing? It's the same thing that we're doing. Yeah, but I guess way. you could going back. I mean, we're not paying city taxes. I mean, you could certainly use it to, uh, for that argument, but but that's the way they do business. That's why. <laughs> But we do pay city taxes, too, every time we buy something in the city. We buy a lot of stuff in the city. So, I don't know. It's, it's just an argument we probably don't need to argue about. We probably just try to need to try to just, make it work. We've got two different systems, each trying to provide a service for its constituents. Yeah, and we happen to be on the county school board, which is charged with the responsibility of the functioning of the county school system. You also represent residents of the city, too. Yes, I do. I mean, I mean that's... I, I do, you do. I'm well aware of it, and that's what I'm looking at. But where I'm going back to is back nine years ago, whenever this thing was set up, <coughs> if I'm not mistaken, McFadden's been around a whole lot longer than the cities. 
Could Probably. Be. I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I think I know what I'm talking about on that, but what I'm saying is not right. <clears throat> what I'm not sure is fair is that a county, a county student and county citizens had no input on the city developing their own system. And, and I wouldn't think it would be fair for a child, you know, 15 to 18 miles, you know, on the, on the edge of the county to get knocked out by a city student who only has to drive two or three miles either to their magnet program or ours. So I would hate to see a county child knock it, knocked out of that program uh, because they don't really have a choice and, and the city child does. Except they do have a choice. We've already talked about Discovery School lets anybody in who meets the criteria. And they're still going to be that far away from the McFadden or Discovery School. I mean, we can talk about shared taxes and all that all we want, but the folks out there who live in the city say, I pay two sets of taxes, I pay at the same rate as anybody else in the county, and yet I'm denied equal access to, to McFadden. And they don't think it's right. And I don't either. But wait, and I don't want to belabor the issue, but there's a lot of county people out there that think just the opposite. And you know, we, the thing is we need to represent all, all the people and we need to do our best that we can to do that. And I think we do. I mean, when you look at, maybe we hadn't done it exactly right in, in some people in the city's eyes, but there's still 50% of those students out there that are city students. So somehow or another they did get in. So, uh, Donald, do you have anything to say about that? Well, I, I expressed my opinion last time we talked about it, uh, and that is when I ask if the school, Discovery School, offered the county kids free access, and if they qualified, there was no distinction in the, uh, if they tested Number three, the neighbor preferred child to get in. Uh, as long as the city operates under that criteria, I feel fairly comfortable with saying, you know, we, we can operate that way too. Uh, so I, I, I don't, uh, I, this tax issue, I, I don't, I don't buy into that, uh, but I do buy into the idea that if they're going to let any child go based upon their ability and that's where they're going to rank, then I, I feel comfortable saying that we, we can let anyone go. Because if that child is good in Christiana and he's third on the list at the Discovery School, then, then he's going to get in. And someone in the city might not get in. Is it just out of, just for clarification, do you, Don or uh, Miss Barnes? So the Discovery School, if if a county resident wants in, when I called the city, they reported to me that they screened all the students that applied, and then they ranked the students from highest to lowest based on their score, and that's how they accepted students into their program was by the score ranking they did not consider city versus county in that so they just took them by rank do you know how many regardless. county kids go to the discovery school a very small percentage is what i understand but like mr jernigan said they have equal opportunity to get in that's what she reported to me when i asked that they strictly accepted by the ranking regardless of city and county if that's the case you know i want to make i want to confirm that okay Again, through another phone call tomorrow, just to make sure uh, that's, that's the way it is. Okay. Any other discussion on that? Let's go on. Okay, B, Central Magnet School eligibility participate in athletics. I think the last time board meeting we had, you probably read a letter I wrote to the TWSAA. Uh, Bernard Childers called me. He's a... Uh, Head of the TWSAA, we are on the December the 9th Legislative Council agenda to plead our case uh, requesting that that any kid, for example, that enters a magnet school 
and wants to participate in football wrestling, which are the two sports that we won't offer there, be allowed to participate in their zone, uh, in their zone school in those two sports, which is what I think the entire board would like to see happen. I don't know if we're going to be able to pull it off or not, but we're on the December the 9th agenda. You're a Hall of Fame member. I'm sure they'll. <laughs> there you go. Well, Grant. But they haven't ever acted upon that type of request before, I'm understanding. Is that correct? I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't think there's a precedent. Dr. Ash is saying that. no, they hadn't. Sometimes they're reluctant to, yeah. to, to plow new ground, you know, but to. Do you do do uh, Dr. Ash? Do you or uh, Miss Miss Cloud know? I mean, are they in a position that day that they could amend that rule? Because we're about to start collecting applications and all that, and people need to know. I just don't see why they wouldn't, but you know, maybe they've got a reason. <clears throat> I don't know. Any other questions on that discussion? C, Riverdale High School Synthetic Turf. This is the information only. The board previously allowed Riverdale High School and Livingston and Livingston Consulting to develop and implement fundraising and financing efforts to purchase and install an outdoor synthetic turf football soccer field. Fundraising efforts have been underway in Livingston Livingston. Consulting has secured a five-year interest-free loan from Wilson Bank and Trust for the purposes of building an outdoor synthetic football field at Riverdale, Riverdale High School. Funds will be generated through the school's booster clubs, businesses, and private citizens, and there will be no cost to the board. The loan agreement is similar to the loan secured for the construction of the Oakland High School indoor athletic facility. Wayne. I thought that there was some kind of statute that the legislature passed that prohibited this. I mean, it's a great idea, and I'd love to see it happen, but I just thought there was something passed that that impeded that opportunity in the future? Not to my knowledge. See, we're not in. Okay. I must have gotten confused. They should that. know. Well, I mean, these two should know from our perspective. I mean, it's comparable to the same arrangement we did at Oakland. It's, it's nearly Identical, yeah. There's nothing that we're aware of that has happened. Yeah. I know I've spoken to you about that. Yeah. 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 Terry. And if anybody, I'm sorry, Terry, go ahead. Oh, I, oh, I was going to do, since they were here, I was, was going to basically just ask them if they had anything to say or any board um, members had any I questions. I'll come up and say one thing real quick. Just, um, I just want to make one clarification of notes are on there. It says do we, we have, have to suspend the rules have, for that, Joyce, or is it all right just to let him? Okay, okay. Um, it says we have absolutely secured uh, the five-year interest-free loan from Wilson Bank. It's, it's not as absolutely done yet. That part of it's not exactly absolutely done. But um, we expect something to be done within the next week and a half to two weeks and have finalized as far as having the individual back to back it and do all that and having everything else finished. But within two weeks, we'll have uh, the actual structure of Wilson Bank, and it's not um, – it, it'll, be a, it'll be a good deal. Um, it'll be good for Riverdale. So we, I just wanted to make that one little clarification because that makes it sound like it's absolutely secured. And until I have a signed document in my hand, it's not done. And I don't have that signed document yet. That's the only one I don't have. But we'll have it done in a week or so. Okay. Thank you. But I asked Angel, I mean, there's, there's language in the agreement that, that would preclude us from ever being financially responsible as a board, isn't there? Yeah. 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 It's guaranteed by a private individual. Bank. There is no agreement <clears throat> between us and the bank. We are not in any way financially responsible. Yeah, the school's not, the school or the board wouldn't be to it in any way, shape, or form. So. Okay. Any other discussion? And and I wasn't bringing that up for opposition. Yeah, I, no. just, I just thought I remembered something. So. Well, I, I'm, I'm I looked into error, it after so. you and I spoke that day because I was a little concerned about it because I even knew that far back that we were kind of this thing's been working for well over a year or so now and and I had researched it and hadn't found anything right. so I had felt pretty comfortable with it. Good. but you know and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people out there think that we could better spend our money but I would say this uh, they don't have to deal with all the phone calls from the soccer clubs the girl, boys and girls soccer teams the eighth grade football team want to know why they can't use the field 
you know, why the field's in such poor condition, you know, how are we going to maintain the field, how are we going to afford water into the field. I mean, this thing really excludes a lot of those issues that we've had to deal with. I'm excited about doing it. I think in the long haul, with what we pay for irrigation, uh, with the grief we deal with from various clubs, more people will get to use it. It's, it's going to be a good thing for, for It will Riverdale. be. I mean, you know, Oakland dumped, what, 250 tons of sand on their field this year and had to resod the entire center of their field. And I don't know what that cost. It had to be, you know, 10, 12, 15 thousand dollars. And you go out there today and that's money that with all the rain we had, we'll have to do it again, mm -hmm. you know, next year. So it's that's money that's pretty much gone at this point. So so it, it has its place. So anyway. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Gill. Uh, Ten facilities. Uh, Ten facilities. A Ruth, a Rutherford County Schools tennis complex change order. <coughs> Same construction company has completed the Rutherford County tennis complex. They have submitted a deductive change order in the amount of twenty-two thousand seven hundred sixty-seven hundred sixty-six dollars and fifty cents for credits taken during the construction of the Rutherford County tennis school, Rutherford County Schools tennis complex. This would change the contract amount from one million six hundred thousand four hundred ninety-one dollars to. One million five hundred seventy-seven thousand seven hundred fourteen dollars and fifty cents, and we're obviously going to recommend that. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Go ahead, to the uh, Eagleville High School greenhouse. Uh, Eagleville High School principal uh, Rhonda Houghton has requested permission to purchase a used greenhouse that will be disassembled, moved, and reassembled on the school property by the Eagleville FFA alumni. The greenhouse is 40 feet wide by 70 feet long and will be placed adjacent to the existing greenhouse. The greenhouse will be purchased and reassembled at no cost to the uh, Rutherford County School Board. And uh, we recommend that you approve the purchase construction of a 40 by 70 used greenhouse by Eagleville School at no cost to the board. Question. Comments. Go ahead, Doc. Is this the same size as the existing greenhouse? Mr. Clardy, you know? It's a little bit uh, larger, actually, except it's two bays and it's a uh, art roof with a common gutter down between the two. Grant. I was asked, Mr. Clardy, will you be supervising or at least uh, in some way overseeing some of the construction? Because sometime when you have uh, stuff taken down, you have some uh, uh, maybe some de defects in the that were taken down that would cause some uh, structural problems, you know. Uh, one of my project managers, Jackie Holden, will be laying the building out and then okay. uh, checking on it regularly. Thank you. You know, we talked about, I'm sorry, so, Mr. Jernigan, uh, pardon me. How about the uh, utilities for the operation of the gas, water, and electricity? Well, that will be. Is that already available? Uh, it's right next to it. It won't take very much to get it there. We may actually help them a little bit with that, just to make sure that it's done correctly and there's no safety hazards. That, that's, that's fine. I just wondered if it was going to be located in a proximity of the utilities. Any other questions? No, but a quick statement. I'd like to do uh, one of these nights a spotlight on what some of our horticulture programs, what they do. Uh, I think you'd be fascinated if you hadn't visited some of those places. It is incredible. Financial matters. General Purpose School Budget Amendments. Uh, one, Jennings Jones Grant for Virtual Enterprise. This amendment budgets a 2009-2010 grant of $20,000 from the Jennings and Rebecca Jones Foundation for the Virtual Enterprise Program. The $12,000 in the GPS fund balance that is left from the 2008-2009 grant and the re related expenditures to help support the Virtual Enterprise Program. These funds will be used to build a stronger Virtual Enterprise International Network in Tennessee by providing professional development to facilitate student learning. And we're going to recommend that you do amend the 12,000 uh, new money plus the 12,000 existing money for virtual enterprise. Question. Next. <clears throat> Two. 
<coughs> coordinated school health. And this amendment reallocates $2,300 in ERA coordinated school health expenditures from 72120-499 other materials and supplies to 72120-370 substitute teachers. These substitutes will cover classes while teachers get training from the Michigan model, which is a curriculum that will help uh, be integrated into at least 16 of our schools this year. And we're recommending that you do approve the $2,300 uh, in ERA funds from health expenditures to substitute teachers. Questions? Three. Uh, transfer for temporary funding of federal programs. On October the 15th, 2009, the Rutherford County School Board and County Commission approved a $1 million transfer resolution in order to loan up to $1 million from the general purpose school fund balance to the school system's federal projects fund in order to avoid temporary cash deficits, deficits in the federal projects fund. The $1 million transfer shall remain in the federal projects fund as a designated fund balance from the general purpose school fund and may be repaid at any time as noted in a resolution passed by the Board of Education and the County Commission. <clears throat> this amendment is a budgetary side of the resolution that was approved on October the 15th, 2009. The amendment decreases the GPS fund balance by one million and increases transfers to other funds by a million dollars. And the motion is obviously to transfer that million from the GPS fund balance uh, to the federal projects fund. Now this is something that we've been doing anyway. Then we, yeah, we just have to pay it back to, at some point, yeah. Jeff. Okay. Reimburse GPS. No, things I've been reading in the papers raise questions about the state's ability to fund the B, uh, BEP for next year. Also raises questions as to whether or not revenues will be there to, to fund the BEP for the balance of this year. Uh, we've got to get through this year. Where are we going to, if, they, if the state cannot fund, where are we going to get the funds if we don't to have access to our um, reserves? We didn't talk a lot about it. I mean, obviously we know what's in store for us next year. We hadn't talked as much about the balance uh, of this year but we're obviously going to, have to start start thinking that through. Jeff, you want to comment? <clears throat> I, I have had that concern throughout the year uh, with with this change in the way we have to hard book funding that cash shortfall timing difference in federal funds. We really didn't have much of a choice on this. I think we've got to guard our fund balance. As soon as we hear anything firm that there might be this year the 09 10 BEP funding might be in danger, then we go into a severe austerity mode. At this point, we haven't heard anything. Uh, there, I'm going to a conference in Memphis at the beginning of December, and that will be our opportunity. Actually, the reason two of us are going is because we will be able to talk to the state folks there and maybe get some answers. I don't like gloom and doom, but I do like being prepared. prepared. And I, I just think there's a mental process that we need to be going through now of preparing ourselves when and if we get to a shortfall era. Okay. And if so we don't wait till then, Absolutely. Jeff, we, we start kind of tightening down a little bit today. We, I mean, I would say that we've been extremely cautious about spending money, period, with the exception of, you know, salaries and, you know, in other words, people out there in the, on the front line know that it's a, lean, it's a gloom and doom kind of year, and they're not asking for stuff they ordinarily might, and we're just trying to safeguard and try to build that fund balance as best we can. We know that we're in a danger zone. Any other questions on that issue? Special education. High cost students 
School system received an additional $19,709 from the state to partially reimburse us for high cost special education students that we educated last school year. This year's figure also includes some funds for high cost preschool students. These funds must be amended into the current year's budget for special education expenditures. Expenditures will be for special ed teacher pay and benefits in 71200 special ed and 73400 preschool. And we're recommending that you amend $14,874 in IDEA revenues and the related expenditures for special ed teachers and to amend $4,835 in preschool revenue and the related expenditures for preschool teachers as presented. Questions? Grant. Are the system getting some of these funds too? I mean, is it pretty much? I'm sure if they've got, you uh, uh, based on the fact that maybe we're having yeah, high, you know, high, high, high risk special ed kids, or high cost special ed kids they are. You know, so I'm sure it's based. It's based on the number of kids, the size of your system, and those kind of deals. So, what makes them high cost? Is it? A, I mean, I guess it well, matters, like, but physical. They're a higher option. Yeah, like for example, if we have Rutherford Academy, we put kids at Rutherford Academy. Mm -hmm. Would it cost a lot of money to educate in Rutherford County? Rutherford Academy, or they have a severe disability that uh, might require additional need or additional therapy or something like that. And they're, they're construed, uh, I think it's an option seven through nine uh, special ed kid, which means they have severe disabilities. It costs more to educate them. Don? Question about special ed in 504. They're, they're completely different funding areas, right? Yes. If a, if a child has 504, that's a temporary is that federally funded or is that? Well, a 504, I, I guess a 504, no, it's not federally funded, but a 504 wouldn't necessarily always be temporary, would it? No, sir, it could be honest. Yeah. We reevaluate every year. We meet our children that have 504 status each year to determine their eligibility. It's a new decision. It's similar to an IEP meeting. But it, it's, it's an ongoing process of determining the eligibility. That's correct. That's correct. But occasionally a 504 wouldn't cost us any more money to implement According to what the 504 was, the severity of the 504. Yeah. You want to talk just real quickly what a 504 is, Paula? Sure. <coughs> 504 is eligibility for students who have conditions that that impact their learning, their, 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 their it's, it's walking, uh, learning, uh, uh, gosh, Angel, breathing, breathing uh, any life, any life processes that they have. So right now we have 504 plans for students who are asthmatic or diabetic, and those are our most prevalent ones that we have. We have about, about, about 100 students in our system who meet eligibility, meaning they need care need someone to help care for them in those situations. Uh, you might also have temporary 504 plans for a student who breaks a leg and has to be in a wheelchair and needs some accommodations to get around the building. And, and, but that would be a temporary situation. But most of them that we have are, are a, a life situation. We got any employees that have 504? Any employees? Yeah. We would have ADA plans, American with Disabilities Act plans on them. And right now we do. I know. Okay. So why would you do a 504 instead of an IEP? Or would you do both in some circumstances? So we have what we call the SAT team process. And it's a, it's a group of, of employees that come together, including the parent, a counselor, a special ed teacher, a, a school psychologist, a administrator, classroom teacher. And you evaluate the needs of that individual child. And then going through that process, you determine if there's a learning concern and it might go towards the special ed direction or if it's a 504 concern and it can be met with 504 accommodations or there may be no eligibility and you just need to find accommodations in a classroom you know you might have to just continue to do some strategies to help that child any other autism questions? one of these uh, one of the conditions could be couldn't it? i don't think that it would falls fall under under special education yeah not a 504 Special education has certain categories with disabilities. 
And with 504, this condition has to severely impact a major life activity. And again, that major, act, major life activity could be breathing in the case of an asthmatic or in the case of a diabetic, being able to care for oneself in the event of a, of a low blood sugar situation. It's kind of safe to say it's, there's often a lot of confusion whether a person qualifies for 504 services or not in there. It is correct, and you have to really go through that process, and that's why we have these SAT meetings in the schools to take it through all of the information we have. We gather all the data from the, from the parents, all the medical information that we can get. We have a nurse that sits on, that five, on, the, on the, S, the SAT meeting as well, and then from there they determine which direction they need to go in order to assist that child. So that process has worked very well for us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Uh, B, building programs. Building amendment. programs amendment. Uh, one, project cleanup. The first of these building program amendments is a routine cleanup amendment that reallocates existing funds within the following projects. No new funds involved and no funds are being moved to another project. The amendment reallocates the following amounts. Rockville Middle, $1,600. Browns Chapel Elementary, $1,445,205. Christiana Elementary Renovation, $43,356. Whitworth Buchanan Middle, $5,960,928. Oakland Middle, $3,449,134. For Browns Chapel Elementary School, one million four hundred ten thousand. The amendment is separating the furniture, equipment, technology, etc., into the separate line items for these expenditures. Whitworth Buchanan, Oakland Middle. The amendment separates architect fees, engineering fees, and site development from the beginning approved construction line item. And we recommend that you amend as presented the following five uh, building pro program projects and amounts as I as I referenced a second ago. Any questions? Grant? Uh, the reason you're doing this so we can get a better handle to compare projects or, uh, I mean, to uh, more, more consistency there? We, we have moved working with the county commission toward more starting with a total budget for each of our projects. And then as we go into the projects, we amend into the separate line yeah, exactly. and we have to ultimately The other questions. Three, Oakland Middle and Whitworth. Oakland Middle and Whitworth Buchanan Middle Schools furniture, fixture, and equipment. This amendment moves two million four hundred twenty-five thousand in existing funding for the furniture, equipment, technology, phone, to library book budget from construction from the construction line for both Oakland Middle and Whitworth Buchanan Middle Schools where it was originally budgeted. The amounts are based on expenditures at the Rockville Middle School. Recommend that we amend two million four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars from the construction budget for Oakland Middle and Whitworth to budget furniture, equipment, technology, phones, library books as presented. Question. Next. Three. Oakland Middle and Whitworth Buchanan Middle School shortfall. This amendment asked the county commission to transfer the $312,655 in funds from the state uh, from the sale of the excess girly property to the building program fund to help fund the middle school shortfall. It's $1,166,790 shortfall was caused by the changes Murfreesboro required when the school system applied for permits for the two middle schools. The amendment also transfers the $104,294 remaining in the Rockville Middle Project, the $20,193 remaining in the Single High Irrigation Project, $287,040 remaining in the Browns Chapel Project, $19,820 remaining in the Christiana Elementary Renovation Project, and $422,788 in the future high school budget to fund the shortfall. And obviously, we're recommending that we do that. Uh, it's with kind of sadness that we have to do this. Also, I might add that there was $250,000 in each school's contingency fund that's pretty well dried up, too. 
as a result of the permitting of these projects. Uh, <clears throat> but I think we all know the, the outcome if we don't, you know, if we don't fund the shortfall. So we're going to recommend that we do that. Questions? Brent. Have, have we or can we reserve our rights, because our attorney's here, uh, to go back and, and try to pursue uh, uh, what we feel is injustice on those permits? And we talked about it a lot. Once the permit fees are paid, they're paid. There's no, no right you have to get reimbursement for those. There's really just no way you can go back and collect those permit fees after But we can't pay under protest, or can we? This goes back to the cooperation issue again. When we were talking about cooperation a while ago with, uh, with the schools, this is the same thing. It's only on the other side. The city could cooperate a little better also. You know, it's pretty interesting. I asked Mr. Clardy, like, for example, <clears throat> what is it that we, you know, an original engineer to the project, original design of the project, road work, irrigation, water lines, that we would have put in, where did we fall short? Because that's where a great deal of the money is going to, that they, we didn't meet their codes, but yet it would have met TDOTs, it would have met state codes and everything else, right? Uh, that said, and I don't put you too much on the spot, but talk about how, where that $1.3 million went to, or 1.4, 1.5, whatever it eventually becomes. There's a lot of things, uh, for instance, on turning lane uh, out at Buchanan, we had a TDOT in agreement on what we're to do and uh, through the city's review. And, uh, and since that is in the city uh, annex area, they had a different idea. So we had to end up adding uh, more turning lanes. Um, irrigation, uh, water line, um, just an, you know, endless number of different things throughout. So what did they require? What, what, what do you mean when you say water lines versus what? what well, um, for instance, if, um, even though, um, consolidated we could meet their requirements we may not meet the city's requirements so we'd have to upgrade those water lines because it's within the city limits to meet the uh, requirement and another thing that going through all of this you end up in redesign phase so that the engineers and the architects workload is just increased severely and of course when you're used to doing a prototype where you have a 3% design fee uh, and they've designed to meet the state requirements, you, they end up doing all this extra work. You have to pay them for that extra work. So the design fees, everything goes up. With a little cooperation, the city taxpayers would probably be paying less and the county taxpayers would be paying less too if we could get together on some of these issues. It looks like to me, because this is going to invariably going to cost city people money too, because the money comes around in a circle. It, it, you know, it's all money that's that's paid in, and I, I think you know we should get we we if they want cooperation from us, we should get cooperation from them, and I think <coughs> we've tried our best to cooperate with them for the most part. I'm not trying to put them down. I'm just saying, I think government entities should cooperate with each other to save money all the way around, and I think we could do that. That all I'm going to say. Grant? I'm going to ask one more time. Is there any uh, avenue that we can pursue to try to get this money back? Once the money's paid, it's paid. You can't get it back. So there's nothing you can do to get it back. I thought we could. Well, you, you, can you file an action because of, uh, of, of the uh, I, I think they indifference. I don't think that's the right word because it wasn't indifference. They obviously were active uh, on other direction, but is, is there anything that you, that you would have a basis for a lawsuit 
on this? Any, any you know, if we had wanted to go to court at the time, you know, to protest the payment of those fees before we paid those fees, we could have gone to court at that point. But point, the problem you had, you, the practical problem you had with that is a timing right. issue because that holds up the project. Right. It holds up the contractor and you got everything bid. It's, it can affect your bid prices and so forth. So it can have a cascading effect, <coughs> which in the long run could potentially hurt you if you miss the bid prices that were initially quoted to you. Because uh, subs, you know, material suppliers all quote things. Their quotes are so yeah, good. We talked about that this time. Yeah, we, we understand. Yeah, why so we're all happy that can Im impact it. But once you know, so you can, you know, if you ever want to go to, I mean, I'm game to go to court with the city on that issue because I think we've got a pretty good case against the city um, for payment of those fees whenever we <coughs> decide we have time to do that. Um, but we're always in such an urgent capacity, urgent need to get the school schools built. We don't have the luxury of, the, of waiting. But, and then we have the, you know, the cost implications of losing your bid and losing your um, construction subcontractors, materials, material suppliers, and so forth. So um, I think if we ever want to take the court on it, I think we have a good case if we decide to go that route, if we get to a point that we have a project that's in the city that we have time that we can wait on it, you know, I think it's a good time to go go to court on it and get court to rule on it. The bottom line so, is the money's gone. And once it's paid, I mean, there's no way to get, I mean, we paid it. Um, and courts are going to say you paid it, you waived your rights to protest it, it's paid. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you weren't finished. I just said beating the dead horse. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Comment. The very next agenda item offers us this opportunity. Yeah, the Siegel High Classroom Edition. Good. There would be fees required or permits. We, I don't think we paid those before with additional. So we hadn't been permitting anything in the city, have we? But for over the last word, we have. Yeah. Remember, I brought the list to the board of uh, everything that had been permitted with the permit numbers, uh, and I got those straight from the city. What so have that, we done in the city prior to the these two middle schools? Um, I know on portables, they tried to hold us up on portables. We we got through that somehow. Well, we've uh, we've got the we bought permits for the portables because the city refused to give us a or the mover a permit to be on strip city streets yeah. if we didn't have a building permit, so we couldn't actually move the thing. Um, uh, we tried to get. So we've permitted Oakland and Riverdale? I, I've got a question. It, to, to be fair to the city, I want to be fair to them. Are any of these fees and anything because of uh, international laws? You know, I know cities come, some of their things that they're building has to come under an international thing that supersedes state and, and local, or I've heard that. Uh, do you well, know of any of that? There's, there's a move in the country to go to an international code which replaces and different things and actually most of the international code is less stringent okay. than some of the existing code. <coughs> okay. Yeah, but there's definitely, I mean, it's just money purely wasted. Like we, we had to post a payment and performance bond just to, to secure the fact that we're going to finish the job, which is completely, I mean, I don't know how much we paid several tens of thousands of dollars of that was completely wasted because that just goes to a third party, doesn't accomplish anything. Um, and that's what you do when you don't have a solvent party there to be responsible and finish the job. But here you got the county en entity, the county's not going anywhere, we can't dissolve, we're, we can't disappear. So we're always here to make payment and make good on our obligations, yet they require a payment and performance bond, which is, uh, I think the city legal department probably thought that was kind of um, unusual by the, that the city administration took that position um, at, at the time, but that was the position the city administrator took at the time, and we got stuck paying it, uh, which is a complete waste of money. Total. Total. Great. What can we do to ensure a, a brighter future on these type <laughs> things? I mean, we, we, need to, we need to get our position solid, 
and, and have something in place to make to move quickly. For well, you would think you would. By. Yeah, you would hope you'd be able to sit down with the city and talk to some of the city administrators well, and, we dis and discuss these, uh, <laughs> you know, um, issues and get them to, you know. I, I don't know whether you do it on a higher level with the, the board of education that meets with the city council to discuss these issues and get a decision made at that point at that level, you know. I don't know, because you have the city administrators, um, you know, with their own mind with respect to how some of these things are supposed to be ma managed. Well, uh, can you get a judge's opinion? What, what venue would this fall under if you had to, to, to we've apply? We've got an opinion. For, we've well, got an opinion you, on it. Yeah, well, we've gotten Tennessee attorney opinion, attorney general opinions before. So we've got that. Those are opinions. They're not binding on the city. So they've been favorable to the county in the past, and the city has not honored those. Um, so, I mean, you, bar, you know, short of you either meet with them or if you have one of these projects that you can go to court on they try to um, hold your feet to the fire about pulling a building permit just say go to court ask the court for a declaratory judgment at that point is whether the cities uh, can require the county to, to obtain a building permit you know the, so like if the we, law is go ahead go ahead if we so, won one of those cases then in the future after that we would it, you would hope it would be better, you know, the city may say, well, it's different circumstances, yeah, okay. or, you know, so you've got that to wrestle through. Sorry. So you have a lot of practical problems that come into the, the issue. One final question. Cannot you file an action uh, for future uh, reference? In other words, go have, get a judge to look at this, and, and, uh, and it would probably be fairly uh, cost efficient as opposed to going the other route because yeah, you'd have court, time yeah. to courts cannot look to speculative type cases they'll say we can't you know unless we have a hard concrete um conflict here um, well actual I mean, they won't they won't hear a case based it's, on something yeah. that happened that's we got the facts or something happened previous that was, <laughs> may not happen that. Again. so you have to have a controversy there at that time for the court okay. to act on it in 2012 we proposed to build an addition to Siegel high school this is a solid action will at some point we'll have plans we'll have needs there you can go with your declaratory judgment action yeah okay we just have to have a schedule that permits us to do it i mean that's the right. key to all of this is we have this desperate need for seats we can't, particularly in the middle the case of the middle schools we had no choice the oh, absolutely. opening in 2012 was endangered so Maybe we have more flexibility on an addition than could take well, the time. Well, the city has had a change of administrators, you know, since all this last school was built, and I don't know whether that will change their philosophy about how things could be done. You would hope maybe it would. So I don't know if it would be productive to have a meeting with some of the city people now to discuss some of these issues. You would rather resolve it through that mechanism than going through court if you could. Um, so it may have an opportunity to discuss that with, you know, the new city administrator and maybe they have a different attitude than they've had previously. Okay. Thank you. Let's see, <clears throat> two-year building program shows revised opening dates, uh, Stewart's Creek High School 2013, Eagleville School 12 classroom edition 2012. We left off the auditorium and a big part of the edition because of the dollar amount uh, and the fact that State of the Economy, Single High School Classroom Edition, 2012. Uh, addition, the bleachers Laverne and Smyrna will be requested for the beginning of the 2011 school year. These changes have been made because of the economic situation. The county may not go to the bond market for additional construction funds until 2011. The Eagle Project has been separated into a classroom addition project for 2012 and a core building facility project for a year later recommended to approve two-year building plan as presented. Questions? Tom? I can only speak for myself, but I still feel uncomfortable with naming the high school at this time. I think our discussions have lent itself to question where that, what school would be the priority school. So I once again just question naming Stewart Creek High School and not just a generic high school for 2013. 
comments, questions? Terry? I mean, the only thing I can say is I think last month when we went over this thing, I think that's the way he wanted it put down there. I mean, I don't have a problem. Well, we felt like Stewart's Creek would help the most schools. That was the reason I think Mr. Gill wanted that to be put down there, but go ahead. I just thought the way we left it was we would just say high school, and then because, unfortunately, we have more time to think of that, we give ourselves a little more flexibility if we left it that way. Right. comment was made about the three high schools and trying to look at zoning and see which zone would provide us with the best effort uh, and, and from there we would decide which site once we know the numbers that would go to Stewart's Creek to Rockvale to Buchanan that, that's a lot of work I, I know but and, and we can't be totally exact but we could come to a reasonable uh, number I think Uh, we're not far. We're not far away from this. Uh, I mean, it, we're we're going to be at capacity uh, at all six of the four high schools. So uh, the Sturt Creek project it seems to me to look like the one that's going to benefit the most schools and, and the most students. So I, 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 would, I would think we. Want to be on that page as quickly as possible because we are we're approaching 2010 here in just a few weeks. You know, it'd be great if the economy turned around and you could build two of them at the same time, but that doesn't. We don't. We don't need two of them at the same time. Is the issue. I mean, you're talking about 105, 110 million dollars. I mean, we can't really fill two of them up. But at any rate, I mean, we can change it to high school, and we'll go back and do our homework. And I th think we can prove with relative uncertainty that Stewart's Creek is where it needs to go, but I'll be happy to do that. Mr. Gill, uh, what would be a, I'd call a drop, drop dead date is when you would really have to decide, I mean, what would you say? Or uh, we've worked on that. Uh, Mr. Problems. Clardy, Mr. Sandvig, you know, when we'd have to seek initial funding and start design and all, I know we got all that stuff. Uh, high school and the Yeah, it's a okay. year. It's a year off. So it's closer than it's like Wayne said. It's closer than what you think it is. Yeah. So well, the, the very first good. thing we need to do, obviously, is the design. But is there any <coughs> leg work in advance of that that we got to do, Jeff, funding-wise or anything? Of course. We got to start lining up funding when. Well, I mean, they, they give the, it's the probably. Year. A move we made with each of these proposed sites is that we prepared the slab. We're, that's a giant step in the in the solving process, in design process, and, and everything else. So we made we did good when we did that. And I I think we've got. I, I would hope within the next six months we could at least come together with some type of figure for these three areas and find out what student population would be uh, given that it wouldn't be 100 percent accurate but enough to make a, a, the right decision yeah and i you know the bottom line is we just need to start working on zoning a school at rockville and one at stewart's creek i guess i guess that's where that's the issue any other questions So just change the language on there to high school, okay, Ms. Michaels? Yes. 11, 12, 12. Uh, 12, there's several policies that we'll be discussing. I don't see a point in reading them tonight. No. We've already read them, but there's one on uh, community use of school facilities, and I'm sure there'll be some discussion. 
another change in the grading system. If anybody wants to see there's their online uh, revision of policy 6.409, child abuse and neglect, policy 5109 or 5.109 evaluation, vacations and holidays, and then finally an employee participation in recreational or fitness activities. And there's one other. Revision of policy on attendance of non-resident students. Any questions on those, any of those policies? Okay, 13. Uh, pursuant to six, section 16.1 of the Rutherford County Board of Education <laughs> bus contract, the Transportation Department has received a letter dated November the 16th, 2009 from Robert Baltimore, contractor of bus 177, requesting voluntary termination of his contract. He further requests that the 60-day notice be waived uh, the Transportation Department is prepared to award this contract to the next potential contractor on the appropriate contractor list, and obviously we'll recommend that we do that. Questions? Any general discussion? Wayne. The uh, resolution that we presented before the uh, TSBA passed uh, the delegation uh, 88%. Now, will they present that to the state legislature? Yes, sir. <coughs> Anything else? Uh, I want to commend the board on how well they did yesterday in our little meeting. I think we did did very well. Kept them a little longer than they wanted to stay. I think we shortened their lunch a little bit. And, uh, I was pretty proud of the board, actually. And Darth, you came through, buddy. I got to tell you, you 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 did some study in there. You were ready to go. So, uh, I think everybody did a good job. When will we know uh, some? Tomorrow, and that's something I might want to mention. Uh, I don't think everybody has to be here tomorrow. Mr. Odom said he didn't. Where Don, did Don leave? Uh, he said he didn't think everybody had to be here tomorrow, but at 2 o'clock, if you, if you want to be here, I think it'd be good. They make a report back to the system. I'll be here. I thought their chair, or at least they, I inferred that she, she was looking for us to be here. She was. I told her I hadn't approved that agenda, though. Anyway. <laughs> but uh, I think Don said he didn't know that it was necessary. Did you hear him say that, Joyce, or? Yeah, yeah maybe, yeah. Wayne? Well, the, uh, they made a comment that they thought it was unusual that all board members were there for the interview. Right. Did I hear that correctly? Yes. So, we got Brownie's point on that. I know some, some people mm -hmm. have some other issues. Doris has some other issues that may prevent him from being here, and I don't know. Uh, Mark's probably at work, and, and, and uh, Grant's, I'm sure, at work. Well, Terry and I don't work. You got that wrong. I'm going to be here, and if, if some of the rest of you want to be here, I, I think it would be very appropriate for you to be here. Is there anything else? Terry, did you get me wrong? Sure. <laughs>